we need to change the way we focus and what we focus on within the context of these organizational strategies, business strategies, technical strategies that we need um, to be able to adapt to complex work, right? Did you see how much I tried to avoid the word agile there? Don't think about it as agile. Think about it as increasing our capability, maximizing our value and maximizing our effectiveness to, to, to deliver that. The name, the moniker is irrelevant. Because what we've ended up with by a focus on the mechanical elements is we've ended up with back backlog barons and scrum stumblers. Um, that's product owners and scrum masters that have no uh, capability uh, to do what they're being asked to do. And they're pushed into positions of uh, 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 just not knowing, not knowing what they're doing. So what, what we, you can, what I've got a couple of previous videos on this topic on the detail of what went wrong, but a summary is that demand has outstripped supply of competent people and businesses have reduced the bar in order to meet the, the, the open positions. So we get a bunch of people who don't know what they're doing. Um, but there's not been a focus on continuous learning and hiring people for that mentality especially for the specific positions like product owner um, and, and scrum master um, and engineers and lead engineers to be able to, to have the body of people within our organization, the, 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 the culture and outlook within our organization that, that moves us in that, in that direction. So that's where we are now. And we need to look at where we're going to go next and how we're going to get there. The first thing we need to do is fix the hiring practices. We need to stop hiring people who have no competence for the thing um, that we're trying to do. It's absolutely okay to bring in uh, 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 interns and bring in people at, at the lower levels, but we want to be bringing people in in the lower levels in the work context, right? So think of it as... Um, I'm trying to think how to describe this. Uh, the way the way I think, if we want good leaders in our organization who are able to lead products or lead people, right? I'm I'm thinking of them as two separate things because product management is leading the product, um, and I don't know what the name for the other one is. Leadership is leading leading the people, um, then. We need people who understand the context that we're working in to be those to be those people leaders. So where where do they come from? Well, usually they've done the job, right? They they they've done something within the context. I I work with some great scrum masters. Um, I by the way, this is why I'm saying this. I, I I'm not talking about being a software engineer. I'm not talking about writing code. I'm not expecting a scrum master to be able to write code, right? I know Scrum Masters, well, I might roll that back a smidge, but um, I, know, I know Scrum Masters who have never been coders, who have perhaps been a business analyst or perhaps been a tester, right? Or perhaps been some other context within, within a team. And they've demonstrated, they've worked hard They've brought in and learned the philosophies around enabling a team to be effective. They've made suggestions that panned out within the context of their team. Their team has noticed that they quite often make suggestions that pan out and help them. And the team has promoted them to Scrum Master. That's the way I think about how you become a Scrum Master, right? Is you don't get hired into that position. The team hires you into that. The, the team uh, enables you to pick up that accountability, however you want to describe it. The team get together and go, uh, yep, yeah, Bob is really good at this stuff. Bob, can you help coach us to do more stuff, to do more capability? They've already gained the respect of the team by participating in the team, participating in the work that the team is doing. 
So the team knows they understand the work and they're making suggestions on how we do our boards or the different practices or different engineering things we can bring in to understand that. So uh, does somebody who's a scrum master need to be able to code? I would say no more than anyone needs to be able to code, which is yes. Um, I don't know if you've looked at the international computer driver's license, but um, at most of the levels, the coding's pretty basic. Uh, being able to understand those logical constructs, because then you can participate in conversations. You can participate in understandings. Like ar what architectures, what patterns and practices are valuable within the context of a particular product. If a product's big focus is engineering, a scrum master needs to understand the patterns and practices of engineering. If the focus of the, the, the people, the doers, is on accounting, right? Then the scrum master needs to understand the patterns and practices of accounting so that they can help coach that group of people towards better accounting, better organization of that work, better planning, better all of the just making things more effective, right? So um, that's where we need to get to. So we've got we've got to where we are, right? With which is lots of incompetent people doing the roles, and we've got to where we want to get to, which is lots of competent people doing the roles. It's for me, it's fairly logical how we make that transition. Is we stop hiring people that can't do it, and start hiring people that do. Um, primarily try and promote from within our organization into those roles um, and and improve the overall capability and lead by example. So this is this is why we want scrum masters who are supposed to be leaders, right? So a scrum master might be a delivery manager. They might be a, a defined role in your organization. They might be a delivery manager. They might be a lead developer who has uh, that picks up the accountability of Scrum Master. They could be something else, right? Um, but they're, they're, they pick up that accountability and they are somebody who has those lifelong learning genes. I don't know how better to describe it. Has that lifelong learning um, mindset, that lifelong learning philosophy um, that I want to understand the world better. And they demonstrate that through leadership. So they lead the team in that they are demonstrating that this is how we want people in our organization to behave, right? Every time an organization promotes somebody who's not capable, it tells every other capable person in the organization that this organization is not for them. That's what's been happening. Promoting people through lack of competence, um, and just not having the right people in the right place. Uh, there's a great book. Uh, uh, the right ideal team player. There's a great book and it's the ideal team player. And in that book, it talks about the types, the behaviors that you want to see in people that you hire. We need to be hiring the right people. We need to be expanding the capability of the teams, of the parts of our organization, of the product development effort within our organization to be able to build better products that are more effective and add more value to our customers.